Hey folks, uh, Joe Morris with Answers Heaven Speaks. You have located a spot. Stay here. Don't, don't race away. Where we do a one-hour show Monday through Friday. I say we. That's uh, my daughter Marissa and I. I'm Joe Morris. My daughter Marissa Morris Bolinowski. Uh, Marissa is a uh, channel. She's a clear, clear channel, clairvoyant. And she channels the other side. She channels uh, the spiritual, the other side, the spiritual, which means she speaks to really high grade people, not grandma with her pink pearls. Uh, mama, <laughs> mama, Marissa talks to Jesus, talks to, yeah, she's even talked to Muhammad. Uh, that didn't go real good. Uh, but she definitely talks to Gabriel, and Gabriel is supposedly the one that that uh, um, that uh, Muhammad had spoken to, that apparently taught him the Quran. But uh, I've got so many questions because I know I know by now I know Gabriel, I know, and I know Jesus as well, and they don't do anything negative, nothing. So when it comes to saying kill somebody no 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 no. you know we're just not going to get that we're not going to get that from gabriel or jesus ah uh, you find it in the bible in the old testament you do you find it uh where where uh, certain judges or kings are told to go kill all the enemies uh you know the amalekites and all this other stuff including all the children and and the flocks and and the wives and everything uh but that's that's man that's man. That, that's not God. That's not God. And it just proves that the Bible is the inspired word of God as written by man. Every single chapter in the Bible is written by a man. Um, their recollection of what they experienced. And it isn't God's direct words. Unless you're looking at the red words in the New Testament, which are Jesus's words. And we like to think of him as God, but he looks upon his father as God. Michael looks upon his father as God, even though Michael is God. I mean, he, he owns our entire universe. What would you call somebody who owns an entire universe and creates everything that's in it? I would call that a greater God. But, you know... Jesus doesn't uh, doesn't like to uh, put himself up on a, on a pedestal. He, he's always been that way. Um, yeah, I hope you listened to yesterday's uh, show. Uh, we have started sending this out uh, from Answers Heaven Speaks on Facebook uh, through Vimeo, and it's getting out really far. So I want to thank everybody that's that's come in and, and watched uh, watched our shows. Uh, but yesterday. And we did very well. We got a lot of people in yesterday, a lot of people around the world. And uh, but Marissa was talking at the end, and I had to cut her off because we can't go beyond an hour. And uh, in order to be able to send this out as far as we can get it, and Marissa was talking about forgiveness. Jesus, Jesus was actually he he was giving us our final thought, and he was saying that you cannot forgive somebody else unless you forgive yourself. How many of you have actually forgiven yourself? Think about it. Think about it. <laughs> I'll bet you'd be embarrassed. I'll bet you would be embarrassed if you went into your bathroom and stood in front of the mirror and looked at yourself. And if your name is Susie, say, Susie, I forgive you. I forgive you. <laughs> you'd think you're nuts. And you'd think, oh my God, you know, now, now we... Now I know I'm crazy. I, I belong in a crazy house. But just try it. Jesus said, you got to forgive. You got to forgive yourself before, before you can forgive anybody else. Uh, if you tap the learn more button up at the top up there, you'll get to Marissa's uh, website and you'll learn all about what Marissa does. Uh, if you want to set up appointments with her, you can set those appointments up with her uh, through that website. You can see all the different books we've written. One of them was Conversations with Jesus. And uh, not to be uh, uh, confused with uh, Conversations with God, which was written by Neil, uh, something Neil. Either his first name's Neil or his last name is Neil. Uh, but anyway, he wrote the very popular book, Conversations with God. Well, we've got Conversations with Jesus. These are 
actual conversations that we've had with the other side. And much of what we've done, not all, <laughs> believe me, we would have so many transcriptions if we actually transcribed all of our lessons. Uh, but in the, in the book, uh, Conversations with Jesus, in fact, hang tight for a second. I'm going to see if I can uh, invite Marissa on here. Nope, she's not there. Nope, she's not there. She wanted me to go on StreamYard, and I don't like that, so I don't want to go on StreamYard. But anyway, I'll watch to see if Marissa comes up uh, on the show here. So anyway, um, there is actually two sections, two small sections in our book, uh, Conversation with Jesus, where Jesus touches on forgiveness. We have forgiveness one, forgiveness two. Uh, let's just see what Jesus said about forgiveness. Again, how can you which is the greatest thing ever, if you can forgive somebody for something they have done, you ask for forgiveness for something that you have done, it'd be nice if somebody forgave gave you uh, for, or forgave themselves for something they did to you. Okay, did I get that right? Anyway, typically no one would think of forgiveness when thinking of self-protection. But Jesus sums it up pretty nicely, but you can't protect your but you cannot protect your aura or your snow globe or your mind and your psyche if you're surrounded with negative energy. Negative energy and even dark spirits. We talked about that yesterday. We talked about where the dark spirits come from. By learning forgiveness, forgiveness of self, one is on the first step to true protection of the mind, body, spirit, and soul. Uh, that was a commentary in the book. Here's what Jesus said. This is Jesus. When you stop looking at it as I am forgiving you and look at as you are forgiving you, for as your guide so eloquently put it, we are all one. For when you look at yourself as a piece of me, you're asking for forgiveness. You are truly just releasing negative energies from your, as you say, snow globe. We've talked about snow globe. That's your protection. Crazy dogs. Crazy dogs. Poppy! Star! We've got somebody at our gate. Poppy! No! Sorry. So when you stop looking at it as I am forgiving you and look at it as you are forgiving you, for as your guide so eloquently put it, we are all one. For when you look at yourself as a piece of me, you're asking for forgiveness. When you're looking at yourself as a piece of me, this is Jesus speaking, and you're asking for forgiveness, you're truly just releasing negative energies from your snow globe. You're releasing these negative energies because you say, I am done with these. They're not mine anymore. This is gone. This is what you have to say to Jesus. I don't want these anymore. I don't want all this dark stuff. I don't want to have all this crap inside my head. They're not mine anymore. This is gone. So the reason why people hold on to these things is because just as we have just said, they feel unworthy and there is no recognition. Nothing is shown to them that is tangible that says, good job for asking for forgiveness. You passed, you're approved going to hear that. You're not going to hear that. You know, you just feel like a dummy sitting on the edge of a stool going, I just prayed to God, but was I praying to myself? Was I praying to a wall? Who, was that wasted energy? No. Believe me, folks. All prayers are heard. All prayers are heard. Some take a little while to get processed, uh, but others get processed right away. So one must truly just believe that they are forgiven and understand that when living on the earth plane, when living in physicality, mistakes are made. Mistakes are made indeed. So when you ask how you forgive yourself for things that you have done, you do not even need to ask, so to speak. You just know that I have already forgiven you. That was Jesus. Ask for forgiveness and he's already given it to you. Now, forgiveness number two. Let's, let's see what it says. I was talking to Jesus through Marissa and stated that something bothers me a lot, and I'm sure if it bothers me, it bothers everybody. And that is, we are told to ask God for his forgiveness for our sins 
But if those sins linger in our heads, then we can't seem to feel worthy enough to accept the fact that God, or you, Jesus, forgive us. And so we keep asking for forgiveness over and over and over and over and over again for the same stupid things that we did that we were more that we're remorseful for. How do we shake that out of our head? We're asking forgiveness. We know we did something wrong. We know that we did something that was not good in the eyes of God. We ask for forgiveness, but we don't believe that we're receiving forgiveness. So we ask it over and over and over and over again. And what Jesus is saying is, hey, I already forgave you. You don't need to keep asking. So it's how do we shake that out of our head? How do we how do we get that out of our head? How do we finally come to the realization that God does forgive us for the stupid things we've done? Now here, Christ starts. This is Christ. Christ. Christ is basically Michael. <laughs> I think, I think, or it might be the eternal son. The eternal son, the, the real eternal son, the one that's from right up there next to God and the Holy Spirit. But here's what Christ says. I have known everything that you do, for everything is recorded within the Holy Spirit, within I, Christ. Do you hear that, folks? Listen to that. Listen to what Christ is telling us. He says, I have known everything that you do, for everything is recorded within the Holy Spirit, and also within I, Christ. Everything that is ever done or will be done has been recorded within your energy field. Listen to that again. Listen to this. Everything that is ever done or will be done has been recorded within your energy field. Does that mean we're just robots? And there's, there's this, this microscopic chip that's in our head that has our whole plan that means that we have to create evil from time to time? Because it's in there and it's part of our plan. I don't know. But he's saying everything that is ever done or will be done has been recorded within your energy field, not will be recorded within your energy field. For you truly are, and I do not mean this literally, like your own universe. You carry within you the knowledge of every universe ever made by God. Listen to that again. You carry within you the knowledge of every universe ever made by, ever made by God. According to the Arantia book, there are over 611,000. Uh, our Michael is number 600,121. So there were 611,120 Michaels prior to our Michael. We don't know if there's more that came after that. Other universes that have been developed over the last 400 billion years because that's how long ago a supernova was given to Michael and, it's, and by God and God said, okay, there you go. There's your universe. Go, go take care of it. And of course, it took a while for it all to spin into action, do, do you know, spiritual, not but cosmological things. So you have the knowledge of every universe ever made by God within you. <laughs> Unfortunately, we just don't have a lot of brain power to find it. You carry this within your body. You carry everything of mine, this is Christ, within your body. You carry the secrets and the mysteries of the universe within your body. So how could you technically be a sinner when sin is experienced to grow? Lessons are experienced to grow. And many times, souls come to the earth plane so that they can experience this as well. That's scary. <laughs> That's scary. Think about it. That's Christ. And he's saying, so how could you technically be a sinner when is the sin that's endowed within us is all part of our growth? You know, um, Tawny, when she was about six, I saw a big change take, take place in her. She, she just turned nine. And uh, she started learning how to lie. And uh, she thought that was good. Uh, because normally they're just, you know, they're, they're, they're an empty filter. They're an open filter. Anything that thing comes in their brain, into her brain, comes out her mouth. 
But when she was six, she started thinking, thinking, thinking. And she started thinking, well, let's see, if I tell them this, they're going to be happy. But if I tell them the truth, they're going to be unhappy. Maybe I better tell them this. I mean, that is when her angel guide, Kaya, uh, stepped back. And it was at that time that God brought his piece of himself and put it in Tawny. But isn't it true? We're all basically evil by nature. Um, all the fun things we think about in our life are things that probably God wouldn't really approve of. Many times it, well, my electricity is going on and off. Can you see the flickering? Uh, it's going on and off. I might lose you. Uh, hang tight, folks. Uh, you just never know. Yeah, yeah, my music just went off. And my computer is probably going to start acting up again. But anyway, let's get as far as we can. Let me, uh, let me finish this, and I'm going to bring uh, Marissa in. In fact, uh, let me try to bring her in while I'm finishing this. Uh, I'm going to prove her, see if she can come in and help me out a little bit. Um, so anyway, let me finish this. Now, that was Christ on forgiveness. This is Jesus. To clarify this, you must understand that we are all divine beings, divine beings of God. And as we incarnate in the earth plane, we are incarnating into bodies, into minds that by de definition is called sin. For the sin is that which is against God, against the divine nature of that which is spirit. For there are many things that human beings will call sin that aren't truly sin. And other things that some beings will not call sin that truly are sin. So understand and know that this is a very loosely termed word, for there are many different definitions for it by many different people. But when we speak of this and we say of this, that souls incarnate on the earth plane to experience sin to grow, this is Jesus again, this is true. They're all lined up. All those souls are all lined up waiting to get into bodies down here on earth to experience what we experience. So do not think of sin as of the devil. Looks like Marissa's going to come in. I just got her on audio right now. Um, do not think of sin as of the devil of Lucifer. Think of sin as being human. And this is not to say that human beings are true sin, but there is a duality between light and not light on the earth plane. And if human, be if human beings were to only experience, only experience the divinity within and only to experience the light, they... Might as well stay on this side. This is Jesus. So know that when you say ask for forgiveness way back in the days, asking for forgiveness was for a priest. You'd go to a priest and ask for forgiveness. And then, then the priest would ask God. You would go to ask them for forgiveness so that they could then ask me, Jesus, for forgiveness. And then they would get paid. You know, you'd pay the priest <coughs> for being an intermediary. But know that before you even think a thought, we have already heard it. Before you even speak, speak a word, we have heard it. Before you even speak a word, we've already heard it. So if you're thinking, God, please forgive me, it's already been done. So you must release the past. You must not feel guilty for the past. Otherwise, you will carry that guilt within you, within your field, and only attract guilty-natured people. So if you walk around with guilt, you're going to be associating with people who also feel the same way because you'll enter each other's field. You, you know, it's like um, bonded brothers or something. And this is all part of the human experience. Jesus goes on. He says, for when one is hurt, they learn. And when one is not hurt, they learn. But this is part of the human experience. And this is part of the risk as the souls take when being incarnated onto earth. Uh, let me see if I can get Marissa. Marissa, are you in there? Marissa, I can see her. I can see her, but she's not there. I'm I here. It only oh, let me in through audio. Um, I, we can try it again with the camera, but um, for now I'm here, I'm listening. Okay. Um, the guy, that, I was like, that sounds really familiar, and then I realized it's our book. Yeah, it's from our book. So anyway, I just brought that up because uh, Jesus had given us a lesson through you yesterday at the very end, uh, talking about forgiveness. 
And, oh, uh, right. yeah. and of course, I wouldn't have had the time to get this in. So I thought I'll start out with what Jesus has told, has told us about forgiveness uh, that's in our own book. Now, I do want yeah, to get back over. Nobody ever forgives themselves. I mean, I've been a spiritual counselor now for, what, 10 years, 12 uh -huh. years. I've been a spiritual counselor. And I have people who still feel guilty over something they did when they were like 10 years old. It's like, geez, you got to get over it. I, I don't say that to them. Obviously, that wouldn't make me a very good counselor. But, um, you know, people hold stuff because they want to be, in essence, they want to be bad people because their parents told them they were bad or whoever told them they were bad. So now they have to find every reason in the world to be bad. Um, yeah. So they hang on to that guilt. It's like they, they pride themselves in being bad to make everybody write about them. And, um, oh, and you yeah, know, you, you said the thing about um, we're born in sin and, and what Peter said while you were saying that is, sin just means that we make a decision based on duality, based on fear. So any decisions that we make based on fear are sin. So like if somebody like gets married because they're afraid they'll never be able to support themselves. So they marry somebody for money. They're in sin. They're marrying that person and they're, they're off their soul's path sinning. So, so sinning just means you're not on your soul's path. I thought that was kind of interesting what he said because yeah um make, think of all sense. the decisions that we've made in life based on fear sure. i mean from taking an easier class in school because you're afraid you may not pass this this and that or whatever you're sinning basically and the person that you're supposed to meet maybe to go to the prom with or you know whatever in, in high school you never meet because you sinned went against your soul's path made a decision based on fear trying to be quote unquote safe yeah. And, um, you know, now we're not living our soul's path. There's so many ways that we can fall off of our path. I, I'm not sure why the camera's not working. I'm going to click off here and then just click me right back on, okay? And okay. Send another request through. I'm so going to get back that. into uh, Jesus from the Urantia book. He's still in the, just starting his ministry. And uh, let's see. Where's it? Yeah, I'm going to say dropped off. Um, let me see if I can get her back on here again. Hang tight, folks. Yep, there comes the light. Nope. That's a keyboard. Don't want a keyboard. I'll approve, Marissa. Send in invite. Let's see if we can get Marissa on here. At one point of the evening conferences, Andrew asked Jesus. Now, again, Jesus is just, they're outside of, of Jerusalem. And he's just getting his ministry started. And so the, uh, you know, it's, it's big time now for the apostles. They've had a lot of practice sessions up there, uh, uh, going two by two, going house to house. And, uh, but now they're having to actually confront people and uh and give the word that's being taught to them by jesus and so they still do have a lot of questions i don't see marissa coming on um it says it's adding so i don't know anyway at one of the evening conferences andrew asked jesus master are we to practice self-denial as john taught us or are we to strive for the self-control of your teaching Wherein does your teaching differ from that of John, John the Baptist? Andrew, that's Andrew asking Jesus. Jesus responds by saying, John indeed taught you the way of righteousness in accordance with the light and laws of his fathers. And that was the religion of self-examination and self-denial. I lost Marissa again. Let me, don't, don't lose track of where we are. I'm going to approve Marissa. Send in by, here we go again. There we go. She's coming on now. I there just set is. a fire alarm off. <laughs> oh my gosh. I blew a candle out and the, and the smoke detector went, do, do, do. I was like, oh my gosh. Talk about oh. um, spirit interference. Hmm. I mean, blowing a candle out, set the smoke detector off. That's pretty funny. Anyway, hmm. okay. I'm ready. Okay. I'm listening. All right. I'll just keep going with the story okay. of Jesus uh, teaching outside of Jerusalem uh, right after the Passover in the year AD 27, and he dies in the year AD 31, I think 31, but we'll see. Yeah, real quick, I was thinking about yesterday about how they said that the beings that we don't wanna talk of because it makes the electronics go nuts, but they said something about um, 1800 years plus 600 years is 2400 years ago. What 34. was going on 2400 years ago? 34, 16 and 18 is 34. No, 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 600, I'm sorry, 618. So 1800 years ago, but they were here for 600 years. So what was going on 2400 years ago in the world? Off the top of your head, you're good at all this stuff. So I figured 
you may be able to uh that's that where the Moses and, and all them or was that more like six thousand years ago um moses was more like uh moses was 1700 1750 bc and now add 2100 to it it's uh we're at 38 3800 years ago was Moses. wow oh, okay well adam and eve supposedly were six thousand years ago gotcha okay well the the um and also you keep saying that michael is god and they keep saying michael's not god just like jesus won't say he's god michael's not god either michael is a creator being that is created a created creator being so he's like a created avatar being made by god to put god's consciousness in so that he can then create on a physical level and understand what the world is because a being can better create a world when it can live in a world and be a little bit part of the world but if god's just this force this amoeba or it's not even an amoeba it's just like a think of when a speaker goes and it put, put it like spits the air out when the bass is going on the speakers and it goes that's god god's like the the the, the, woof, the woofer yeah like the stuff that comes off this you know when you turn a speaker on super loud and 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 it goes boom boom and it goes and it blows air yeah. out of it um they they're saying that that's what that's what god is god's like god is that force and that force is created by sound but what comes before God is the ultimate uh, creator. And that creator, nobody knows whether it's a being or whether it's a, a um, like just like a force, or a, a cre nobody knows, nobody knows what it is. Nobody knows what created that, like what made that noise. And that's the big mystery over in spirit. Not even Jesus will tell me. I said, Jesus, can't you tell me what makes that sound? And he says, it's complicated. He says, it's not necessary to know. It's a dynamic of God and it's like calling you, he says, it's like calling you your voice. You're not your voice. Your voice is something that is emitted from you. Just like God is the, that force, but there's something that comes prior to God that speaks those words and speaks everything into existence. And that original mind, that original God is not anything that's defined in the Urantia book, in the Bible, it's not anything that's described anywhere. The closest we get to it is the Holy Spirit. So he's saying there's like this level of God that we don't even understand and that he he understands, but he doesn't know how to explain it. Maybe I'll explain mm -hmm. it tomorrow or on Saturday at the class. Or we're going to do a couple hour channeling, right? On Saturday. Yeah, if you get it all set up. Yeah, we're doing it on StreamYard. <laughs> um, that way we can be side by side. But um, yeah, the, uh, the, I, I'm excited to channel them and answer a bunch of the questions that I have for them because they start to get into stuff and then, and then I feel your impatience like, oh, we got to get out of here sooner. I feel like we got to be quick. But then at the same time, I want to get all the information through, but at the same time, so yeah, I'm super excited. And then we can share that information with all of you guys um, that watch the show. If you're, if you're interested, also people, write any questions in that we can ask on Saturday when I'm in trance and my dad's asking questions to the guides. Um, because we can ask those questions for you and then report back next week. Anyways, go ahead, Papa. Okay. Jesus goes on, he says, uh, but I come with a new message of self-forgetfulness, self-forgetfulness and self-control. I show to you the way of life as revealed to me by my Father in heaven. Verily, verily, I say to you, he who rules his own self is greater than he who captures a city. Listen to that. Verily, verily, I say to you, he who rules, rules his own self is greater than he who captures a city. Self-mastery is the measure of man's moral nature and the indicator of his spiritual development. In the old order, you fasted and you prayed. As the new creature of the rebirth of the spirit, you are taught to believe and rejoice. In the Father's kingdom, you are to become a new creature. Old things are to pass away. And behold, I show you how all things are to become new. And by your love for one another, he's speaking to his apostles. And by your love and for one another, you are to convince the world that you have passed from bondage to liberty, from death into life everlasting. He's referring basically to saying that uh, our lives are basically death until we have accepted that 
God that lives within us. Wait, read that last couple we're lines like again. Wa we're like walking death. Yeah. He says, and by your love for one another, you are, you know, brotherhood of man. You are to convince the world that you have passed from bondage to liberty, from death into life everlasting. Does it make you think that we're just living in a repetitive uh, purgatory right now? Sometimes I wonder if we're just in purgatory. living, living a uh, living a, uh, a microchip that's in our head that we that everything's been planned out, everything's recorded, everything is already done, and we don't know it, and we just go about our days, and we do this and we do that. We don't know why we do this, we don't know that. But I, I said earlier, it's. God knows everything that we have done and everything that we will do. Uh -huh. So it makes us kind of one. Makes you kind of wonder. Well, are we? What are we? Are we robots? Jesus are we automatons? Saying, yes, we are. We are at some level. You must understand that you are multi-dimensional beings, and we've said this over and over and over, and we'll continue to say this until it clicks for for you, for everyone concerned, watching this, listening. Yes, we are robots in a sense. The robot would be considered your genius, the piece of you that knows everything that needs that knows everything it needs to know in this lifetime. This lifetime is planned by the consciousness that you are, the Christ consciousness that you are. The ungraduated consciousness goes in. The graduated consciousness is what plans the life for it's it's to forget itself and to go in and to live life as if it had never lived it before. So the consciousness that you are exists in another place, in another space, in another time, in another world, where all of this, the Urantia book, the Bible, the religions, they're non-existence. They're part of a story. They're part of a story. And, and there's something that, that will be added into the reality that we are living in to help to accomplish some things when, when the fetters of being a human being begin to conflict with themselves, we'll enter in with another god or guru or prophet or something for someone to create a religion over to control the masses because individuals do not understand, but those individuals are us. And we are watching ourselves thinking that they are the only self, thinking that they are us living in this reality, not remembering what was planned. So yes, there's a piece of you inside of you that is robotic in nature. It knows everything it needs to know. It has a path and it walks and it goes and this lives in the, in the mental body. It's not an emotional piece. So many people that are lacking emotion, many people that are, uh, uh, with the, the, the word is escaping me. I just saw Elon Musk's face pass by me. That was weird. Um, uh, autistic or um, is it Asperger's or whatever? When they have less emotion? I don't know. I just thought Elon Musk, whatever Elon Musk has, they said, they said when one is, is tuned into their genius, into their robot, they can access all the information they could ever possibly need in this one lifetime, but they don't have access to their emotional body. The emotional body is what makes us do crazy things. The emotional body is what makes us delve down into anger, fear, guilt, all of these things that human beings feel, and this is part of the fallen reality, the emotions, having to deal with the emotions. The, so there's some worlds that don't have souls, don't have the human emotions. They just have the mental body and they live on other planets and other places. They know everything that they need to know in that life. They experience life. And it's like their real self is looking down through them, experiencing life through them as if they've never experienced it before, but they don't have human emotions. Here on earth with Satan came the emotions. Lucifer is not part of that Satan energy. Satan brings the emotions. So when we start to drop down into the emotional body and we cannot control ourselves, just as you speak of the self-mastery, when we cannot control our own emotions, not through drug taking, not through drug smoking, not through drug injecting, not through, through addictions to sex, to, to playing music, to playing whatever, people will find addictions to something to focus their mind on so that they do not have to feel. But when one can fully master themselves, this is why we say it's better, it's, it's more astounding than one that captures a whole city because you are, in essence, capturing your entire soul, your entire essence, your entire you, and being able to control those emotions that come in. Most people will, many people will kill themselves over emotions. 
they'll die of heartbreak. The emotions are, are killers, but they're also what make us want to come here because they feel so amazing. When you feel good, you feel good. And there's nothing that can take the place of that. Nothing in any other dimension anywhere. But yes, we are a robot on one level and that drives us. Once we become awakened, once our soul awakens, our soul then awakens to another field of energy. And that's what everybody awoke to in 2011. In 2011 and in, in 2012, everyone awakened to the emotional body, which is also the spirit body. And they also awakened to more of the ego. So they went off of their robot and they went more into this emotional field. And this is why many people became empathic. Many of you watching this now can feel other people's emotions, but you couldn't feel them before 2011 or 2012. You started to feel them then. That's why everyone that started to feel this stuff started to delve into spiritual things. Many more people are interested in spiritual shows like this than there were in 2011 and 2012. This was something that nobody would even watch then. But now, just as we have said, the books were way before their time. People are interested in this because there's other pieces of them that have wake, woken, awoken, uh, awoken, awoken, uh, that's not a word, have woke, I don't want to use woke, that have awakened. And those awakened pieces want to know who they are. So just imagine, Joe, you are seven people. You're seven people. You're one person right in the middle. That's your authentic you. And it is robotic in nature. It knows what it needs to do. It knows where it needs to go. It may need to sin here and not sin here. It may need to move forward on soul path here and not here. It may need to screw up or, or be victorious here. It knows what it needs to do. And it drives you forward because that's the plan. When you awaken to this other dimension of self and begin to expand your soul out of that robotic self, that is when you start to feel and experience past life, emotions and feelings that the soul has experienced. And you start to think of when else was I alive and, and what am I supposed to be doing? And we start to get want to get to know that other person that is the soul. And then you have another person that's the spirit and you have another person that's the ego. So you have all these different people inside of you. And yes, one is a robot, one is emotional, one's the ego. We've got the soul, the spirit, the over soul, and then we've got Christ. So all of these bodies, your awareness, which is a spark of light that comes from the all that is, the everything, the one that comes before the subwoofer, and subwoofer, that's what it's called, one that comes before the subwoofer, the one that speaks, that makes the subwoofer make that force, that makes God, that makes Michael, that makes Christ, that makes everything down here. That, a little spark of that is in each and every human being, good, bad, every animal, everything. God wants to experience all of its creations personally personally, and that's that light that you are. So that awareness that you are can be in any one of those seven bodies at any given time, as long as that body is awake. If the body's not awake, you can't go into it. It's asleep. So many people are awakening. Their souls are awakening right now as we speak. In fact, we'll be speaking on this later in this channel's class because the world is awakening again. The white horse is coming in. People are awakening and these other aspects of themselves are awake. And we have the ability to bring that little spark, that little awareness, that little eye of God into our Christ body and be Christ. Everyone has the ability because the planet is becoming Christed. Earth is Christ now. And it was not this before. It got there, turned into the Antichrist when everyone fell into fear, and now it's coming back out of fear and back into the into Christhood, meaning forgiveness, compassion, strength, and truth are the things that many just need to focus on. Let go of the fact that one of the other people that you are did something really bad. It stole, it lied, it cheated, it, it, it got thrown in jail, it, it got arrested. It, it did really bad things. But that piece was driven by a robot that may have been predestined to do this, predestined to go through this so that you could help others or, or affect somebody in some way so they could learn something while you were put away or, or whatever it is that, that you feel you did bad. So, so know that that other person in you is awakening now. And that other person, Joe, is the one that you go into when you don't have pain. When you fall into your back pain, your shoulder pain, this is when you fall into that you that's Joe, that's a robot that just does what it's supposed to be doing. And it, it, the body deteriorates. So when you enter into your Christ body, this is when you no longer feel pain. So you've experienced this personally. People can look at someone here has actually experienced this and you can share the difference that you feel when you go from being in complete and utter pain to just being better. You feel as if you're healed, you're not healed, you're shifted from one self to another. It's very interesting indeed. That was Peter that said that at the end. Very interesting mm. indeed. Good, I'm not even sure if I've got anything to say about it other than, uh, well, I don't know. I guess there's a part of me that just has a 
that has a that had a plan in it to do all the stupid things I did as a child, just like all of you. Everybody's done stupid things. And anybody oh, yeah. who says, No, I didn't do anything stupid, well, you are stupid for then saying that. Then they are stupid, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> stupid for no saying judgment that. Here. <laughs> yeah. It, it makes you wonder, well, maybe that was all planned. Uh, we didn't like it, but it was all planned because there are further lessons to be learned and and by using our own will we can choose to uh to do the father's will or we can use our will to just keep doing what it was that we were doing that got us into trouble in the first place peter says um, peter says think of all the people that are affected in the and the he says like the tsunami effect the snowball effect not he says the tsunami effect i said you mean the snowball effect he goes no the tsunami effect i said okay um he says the 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 tsunami that is created every time we do something that we think is bad something good may have come out of any bad thing that's done and then think of it third fourth fifth sixth seventh eighth ninth generation person that's affected by the bad things that somebody does you know somebody's a criminal that gives a prison guard a job <laughs> it feeds their kids you know it's it's everything everything has a a balance and everything has an equilibrium and it all balances out in the end and as long as we can look at it as that wasn't bad that i did i actually <laughs> I gave I gave the jail guards a job or I gave, you know, this, this, or that. It's it's all about how you feel connected to God inside that affects the type of person that you are. So if you want to rate yourself, this is a somebody just came in as Mary. Mary just came in. She goes, This is what I need to say. She says, really quick. I'll make this very quick. She says, Me and Samuel. It's her and Samuel. What what can determine whether you are a good or bad person is the way that you affect others around you is your your frequency or your vibration, the emotional output that you have in this world. If you have a smile on your face, but you are a livid, angry, bitter person that's sarcastic and passive aggressive and, oh, nice, nice shoes there, Mr. Like, you know, people can feel your resentment and your anger in the things that you say, even though they sound nice and there's a smile on your face, but our emotions are like rippling waves going throughout this entire hemisphere of this planet that we are living on at this time for in this in this hemisphere everyone is experiencing the upper frequency vibrations at the time so if you have negative emotions and fear you will stick out like a sore thumb and this is what we were explaining or wanting to explain later about the reawakened souls everyone's reawakening and you have to reawaken to a higher vibration don't be fake don't be a liar don't be somebody that doesn't tell things straight and remember you are your word you are your word. So when you say you're going to do something, do something. When you say you're not going to do something, don't do something. So just understand that the only thing you have in this world is God, and that's your word, because God is the word. So so just be very attentive to that, and then understand and feel your emotion around it. Are you saying that you'll do something that you really don't want to do, and telling somebody to try and make them happy, but then you just don't do it any, anyways, and then everybody gets upset? that lowers the vibration of the planet which is bad if you want to know good and bad so i just wanted to explain this so people could know that there is good and bad and that's how you affect the the humans around you and that's through your emotions so you need to check yourself and that's peter you need to check yourself and you can do the snow globe to clear your emotions that you don't want anymore <laughs> he's all he's um, like holding the book that's funny he's like holding the book marketing it for those of you who don't know what the snow globe is once again just tap up there it says learn more and uh, you can actually ask for the free PDF of our book entitled The Snow Globe. Yeah, uh, it'll, it'll, it it's, is, a, it's an instant download for it's free. One of, it, it's literally the first thing that Jesus taught us. Yeah. Uh, when we were doing our first book, Answers Heaven Speaks, that was the first lesson they gave us, was learning the concept of the snow globe. And, and it's just a, It's basically a way of, of reminding you to put on the armor of God every day. And you just envision that car, that uh, that armor to be the snow globe because you got to see out of it. You're in there. You're that little 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 tiny thing in the middle of the snow globe. But then you got you, you know, if you're really lucky, you got lots of white flakes in there. If you've just been a perfect person your whole life, you got nothing but white flakes in there, and there's no big deal. You don't judge anybody. But if you're like any other person on Earth, you've got all these black and green and red and orange and yellow flakes in there and they all represent your sins and so if you don't ask for the holy spirit to come in first picture yourself in that snow globe then ask the holy spirit to come in and clean out the water 
force everything, all those, those flakes to just drop down to the bottom and turn your will over to the Father. And then from that point on, you won't project. Because if you don't do that, you're just going to project. All you see you know, is your own snowflakes. You so just see your own snowflakes and you project them onto somebody else. You walk in the house and go, uh, why are you so mad to your husband? He's like, I'm not mad. And you're like, yes, you are. You're mad. I can tell when really it's your own snowflakes, but you're so unaware of your own emotions and your own feelings. And so unmastered, unself-mastered that we just accuse everybody of what we're feeling and what, what we're thinking 24 seven. That's my favorite teaching that they ever taught us was reflection of how we only see ourselves and others because that was a huge eye opener for me. I mean, even with parents, when we accuse our kids, when I accuse the kids of doing something, I have to think, oh, geez, is that something I would have done? Are they really doing that? Or is it just me thinking they're doing that because that's what I would have done? And I've caught myself and I catch Jeff all the time accusing Matthew of things that Matthew's not doing, but it's something Jeff would do. So it's, it's interesting as parents to catch ourselves projecting on our kids. Anyway, um, yeah, okay, I'll be quiet now. You can keep reading. I'm yeah, we're just, we're chair. talking about self-mastery. I, I was also saying yesterday or earlier today, I was saying, you know, kids, kids by the age of six, they learn, they learn how to lie, steal, cheat, everything. As they, it's they called people these, pleasing. They, exactly. They were perfectly perfect angels. They were just angels up through the age of four. Or we thought all, they were. All of a sudden you go to your son and, and uh, or your daughter and you go, hey, what happened to all the cookies? And your son or your daughter says, it wasn't, it wasn't yeah. me as he's spitting the crumbs out of his mouth. No, I don't consider that talking. a lie. I just consider that mm -hmm. like a. Like I don't want to get caught. I don't want to get in trouble. Yeah. I don't want to get in trouble. So I'm going to lie. It's called self-preservation. You know, yeah, we learned that right from the get-go. Well, mean, we, we learned, learned we, we study our parents and, and we study our parents and what makes them happy and what doesn't make them happy. And we become what makes them happy in front of them. And then when we're not in front of them, if we don't like being that way, we, we become something different. And then, you know, have to be some, I watch my kids. They go from talking one way when they're around each other to around me. They, they talk real like sweet and nice. But when I hear them alone, I'm like, whoa, are they really six or seven and six and seven years old? They sound like teenagers. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so it's they talk one way around Jeff. They have to talk one way around me, but they know how to make us happy. So that's that's what they do. But I, I think that also our beliefs about about, you know, what kids are going to do will blind us from seeing what they really do. Like I think, oh, until they're seven, they're pretty much completely innocent until their ego kicks in. You're saying four. So that's what you're going to notice. So what I'm going to notice is when they turn seven, they're going to be different. So whatever we think, I think that's what we see. And again, project, we project our own beliefs onto it. But uh, yeah, so <laughs> Madison and Matthew are the biggest liars in the world. They always lie about everything. But I'm hmm. like, you guys, I, I know you're not telling me the truth, but I'm not going to call them a liar. I just say, just tell me the truth. And they go, okay. So they know if they tell me the truth, they won't get in trouble. But sometimes they tell me things that are really bad and I wish I could get them in trouble, but I'd already told them, if you tell me the truth, you won't get in trouble. <laughs> It's like, uh, like Matthew scraping up Jeff's truck with a rock. Oh, yeah. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know. We well, I'm, not camera. Sure, I'm, I'm not sure how far I can go because by the time I finish reading this next part, it'll be time to go. Um, okay. So I don't know if I should wrap up and just have uh, Jesus wrap something up. Let me just read this one part and yeah, then we'll, we can go. He may have something to say. Jesus says many times when you have done evil, you have thought to charge up your acts to the influence of the evil one, when in reality you have but been led astray by your own natural tendencies. Did not the so prophet it's Jeremiah? It's not Satan. It's it's our it's own. It's your it's our own self. It, it's our own mind. It's our own actions uh, that we're we're doing this evil totally on our own. It isn't. It isn't Lucifer or Satan or the devil. You know, standing on your shoulder going, do this, do this, do this, do this. What Jesus is saying is it's all coming from your natural tendencies. Yeah, and so that goes along to... with what I channeled the other day on, oh, I, I discontinued the page on and Intuition Daily Living is they said, you are Satan. Like we are Satan. Like, like we are the egg of God. Like we're all an egg in the beginning. And then if we are, that egg is fertilized by man, then we are technically Satan. We're born into Satan because Satan creates us on this planet. And then prior to that, the father was the one that, that fertilized the egg that we were, and that made us Christ beings, which was not of this world. And, and it was the paradise world where we didn't have to experience duality. 
So technically we are Satan. So we're going to have Satan's words in our head going, go do this, go do that, go do this, go do that. And it is our own tendencies because we're half him and we're half divinity. We're half perfect and we're half flawed. And it's all where we choose to put our attention. Go ahead and keep finishing that. Sorry. Yeah, this is the last I'll say, and I'll let you finish it up. Jesus said, did not the prophet Jeremiah long ago tell you that the human heart is deceitful above all things and sometimes even desperately wicked? The human heart. How easy for you to become self-deceived and thereby fall into foolish fears and divers' lusts and enslaving pleasures, malice, envy, and even vengeful hatred. Salvation is by the regeneration of the spirit and not by the self-righteous deeds of the flesh. You are justified by faith and fellowship by grace, not by fear and the self-denial of the flesh. Albeit the father's children who have been born of the spirit are ever and always masters of the self and all that pertains to the desires of the flesh. When you know that you are saved by faith, you have real peace with God. And all who follow in the way of this heavenly peace are destined to be sanctified to the eternal service of the ever advancing sons of the eternal, of the eternal God. So we can overcome it. Uh, we can overcome it, but basically uh, it isn't, we can't just blame the, the devil on the things that we do because it's all built in within us. We have to learn to overcome it. And, uh, and we do that through faith and trust in the eternal God. So that's it for me. I'm going to let you, you got about three minutes, Marissa, to wrap it up. All right. Well, do the guys want to say anything? They're saying, they always have something to say. Yeah. Um, okay, let me see. Um, the one that's coming in is... Um, or we can just wrap it up. No, it's ISIS. It up. We'll say, oh boy, that's going to take forever. Um, oh, oh, ISIS, oh my gosh. ISIS, I don't know who ISIS is. She says, she says, ISIS, ISIS, was, ISIS was Osiris's wife. I heard Osiris first and then I heard ISIS. Yeah, so, ISIS, um, ISIS is the one that uh, um, ended up taking, uh, finding Osiris's dirt dead body that osiris's brother oh and uh, resurrecting killed. him or something and he resurrected uh osiris to be the god of the dead and at the same time uh he, she took um semen or whatever out of him and put it into her and she created uh the very kingly king horus horus h-o-r-u-s if you don't know who that is look it up interesting uh, but that's Isis, Isis, Osiris, and Horus. So she was a psycho, and she did artificial insemination on herself. Well, let's see basically. what she has to say. Yeah. So yeah, she says that she says the power of creation is within us. We have all the oh, she's talking about fertilization and seeds and stuff. She says she says that the fertilization of the egg in which each of you are, you are all an egg to start with. You are all an egg. And that is what you are. That's where your consciousness lies. That is where you are. That is what, what you are. And every egg is exactly the same in essence. What fertilizes it is what brings in the, the variance or the difference. So understand that each human being that is watching this today, every single human being that will ever live is created in this reality, in this world, in man, if they, you are a flesh childbirth, a childbirth that, that gives pain because you are an animal-like creation. You are created like an animal. And understand that if you don't want to be that animal inside, you can feel your animalistic tendencies. You can feel your animalistic desires. Ask yourself each day, am I acting like an animal? And don't take it as a compliment if you are. Many of you may know, oh, I'm an animal. No, no, that's not a compliment. That is you're acting like a beast, like a beast man or a beast woman. Try to act like someone who's not a beast. Try and act like somebody who's not animal-like in nature. And you'll begin to see and realize that the true nature of God will flow through you because the only thing that keeps you in the duality of Satan, a man, is that animal-like carnal instincts that you have. Those are the, the flesh. But understand that you can live in Christ, in the flesh, and be human, be God-like, and, and not be that animal. You can be in the flesh, and the planet has gotten to the point where it is here. It's getting here. In the next 19 days, the planet will be peaking at a point whereby portals will be opening. The earth will be entering into a space where everyone can enter into their physical body as their soul with Christ, and they can live enlightened lives if they choose to. But we'll see what happens, because the last time this happened, we created the crisis, the pandemic. So what we are trying to bring through very heavily for the next 19 days is please, 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 
please, everyone, keep your emotions up, understand that your thoughts create, and understand that you are an all-powerful mighty being. Think back to December of 2020, 2019, right before 2020. Think back to then. Think to where your mindset was from March of 2018 until December or February of 2020. Think of where you were mentally, emotionally there. You're getting back to the point where you can be there again. And just know and understand that this time, don't create mayhem. Don't create sickness. Don't create illness. And don't create a fear-stricken planet the way that you did last time. This is our warning, but we'll continue coming in to warn everyone because this is very, very important. We want you to take us very, very seriously because last time we were not taken as seriously as we needed to, and now you see what had happened. So we need to stop this. We bless you. Good. Okay, that'll that wrap Mary it up at the for end. today. That was Mary, and she said over the next 19 days. You know, it's in 19 days exactly? Yeah. Uh-uh. Christmas. Christmas. Oh. Yeah. So over the next 19 days, uh, focus in on, on avoiding evil, avoiding the things. Avo- that take avoiding you. animal-like instincts. Yeah, avoid like, your animal instincts. So yeah. anyway. Think of dogs oh, fighting over a piece of food, fighting over or trying to hump each other as if it walks by. Or, you know, they, they don't have any sort of like, oh, you go ahead and take this piece of meat. I'll get the next piece of meat. They're like, rah, rah, rah. No, no, no. It, so. uh, yeah. no. Only Star does that. Star gives away everything to... to poppy uh anyway okay uh mm. that'll do it for today thank you okay. marissa for coming in have yourself a great night i I'm know have you class have your tonight, show guys, so if you want to come to class i'm starting readings at three o'clock in one hour i'm going to start doing readings they're only they're half price of what they usually are so just um get a hold of me on my website if you want to um get any information on it there's two slots open good I mean, five readings and, uh, class. and if you can send this out to vimeo as soon as you can that would be great oh, it worked out really good so Perfect. anyway okay marissa gotta go Okay. Uh, have yourself a great night and uh, right. God willing, we'll all be back here again tomorrow. We will be. Okay. Bye everyone. Okay. See you tomorrow or tonight at my class. If you want to come discover intuition.com. Great. Thanks Marissa. Go ahead and click off on your end. Okay, everybody uh, have yourself a great day and thanks for joining us today. And uh, if God's so willing, we'll be back here again tomorrow and we'll see what else Marissa has to say from the other side. So take care everybody. God bless.